Right, welcome back. In case you're just joining us, uh, it's time for our second conversation. Taiwo Yedele, West Africa Tax Partner at PricewaterhouseCoopers, is joining me right now from Lagos via Skype. Mr. Yedele, welcome to the program. How are you today? Mr. Yedele, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, this should be a happy new year. Have we seen this year? We've not, too. Oh. So, happy new yeah. year coming up in March the third month yes you thank know you, very much. you know we always have this culture in nigeria happy new year happy new month happy valentine everything happy sunday so mm -hmm. happy everything <laughs> yeah. all right let's get straight to the business of the day firs uh teen registration deadline april 12th what does that really mean our reporter helena Laurie just went out to the street again to find out what exactly just give us what's what's happening though what is happening? Mm. So the Finance Act was, was signed into law on the 13th of January by Mr. President. And it was gazetted in, it was published in the Gazette in February. And it has a commencement date of 13th of January. Uh, one of the provisions in the Finance Act is that any company uh, that wants to operate a bank account must provide a tax identification number and if you already have an account in operation with a bank uh, without a team uh, which is going to be very rare you are required to provide your team within 90 days so the frs notice only just counted 90 days from january 13 which is the effective date of the finance act and that is why in their public notice they have indicated by that by 12th of april uh, if you do not have a team operating a corporate account, then you will not be able to continue to assess your, your bank account. Um, I need to clarify that this requirement is, is slightly different from the requirement for personal accounts. So the provision in the Finance Act that requires individuals to have a team for their account uh, says, number one, it has to be an account that is for business. And then it requires that you must have that team for you to open a bank account, a personal account for business purposes, and to continue to operate the account without any indication as to how long the time you will have if you already operate your personal account for business purposes without a team. Uh, we can also assume that the 90 days would apply, which means in that case, by the 12th of April, if you have a personal account that you use for business purposes without a team, then you may no longer have access to the account. Mm. I like that clarification because even, be, even before this, if you go to register for an account in a bank, one of the requirements is giving the bankers a team. That's a tax identification number, isn't it? Yeah. So what was that's correct. Yeah. So what's different, or is it what exactly is is different? Because a lot of people don't also understand that. Because if you take, if you want to go, if you want to go and open um, a corporate account in a bank, is one of the requirements normally. Yeah, that's correct. So for companies uh, who have bank account, I, I do not see how anybody would have opened a bank account for their company without a team. So we can assume that that is not a problem at all. I think the reason why it's in the Finance Act is just to give it the legal backing in case anybody wants to challenge it and go to court and say, why you asked me for a team when I just want to open an account? Uh, the reason why the amendment is important is actually for personal accounts. Uh, because we have people who open their personal accounts, they do not have team, uh, or they had team, but they didn't have to provide it to the bank, and they just opened their personal account. But then in the course of events, uh, some people would then decide to use the same personal account for their business uh, operations, uh, like enterprises, uh, sole proprietors, and all of that. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that, but the point is that if you then use an account for business purposes, even though it was not originally, uh, you know, um, opened as a corporate account. And the fact that you're using it for business means you intend to make profit. And if that's liable to tax, you should be paying taxes. And that's why government says we need you to provide your team. So I think the impact will be more around personal accounts that, that are being used for business purposes. Uh, those individuals that are affected, we have to obtain their team and make sure that they have everything in place before uh, April uh, 12, uh, 2020. Now, the question is, because I saw 
In fact, I got information that a lot of people, for example, in, F in FCT, FCT IRS, for example, sent messages to people uh, telling them to file uh, their, I think, their tax returns or so uh, before the end of a certain uh, time. I don't know if you've had such complaints, especially when this information went before uh, the president signed, you know, then I think sometime last year in December when we were talking about Finance Act, a lot of clarity, people did not really understand what that was, that if you don't have it, you won't have access to your account and all of that. Can you speak to that? Yeah, so the requirements in the tax law for every individual to file their returns has always been there. Uh, for an individual, you must file your tax returns not later than the end of March. March 31st of every year, so which means for 2020, year of assessment, you must file your returns no later than 31st of March, which is the month we are in now, uh, regarding your income for 2019. So that requirement is regardless of whether you have a TIN or not, uh, whether you have a bank account or not. Of course, before you can file returns, you need a TIN. And it could be at the point when you approach the authorities with your returns that they register you and give you a TIN. So what the FCTRS has done is perfectly in order. It's okay to remind taxpayers to file their returns, uh, whether they have a bank account or not. Uh, so everybody has to meet that obligation. I do know that many uh, taxpayers and, and individuals have not been compliant, uh, but I think it's a new dispensation for Nigerians now to start thinking differently about our approach to tax matters. Some of the things that have been done in the finance app is to see how to, you know, take out the poorest people from the burden of tax, which means once you have protected the, the, the poorest people from the burden of tax, then the rest of us have to play that obligation to make our society better. Now, for this, which we, I, I just asked you, who is involved? Because I heard you say, irrespective of whether you have a bank account or not, uh, can someone file a return if that person does not have a job or not? And is it for the also salary earners and what have you? Is there a certain threshold? You understand what I mean? Yes, yes. Yes, so that's a very important question. So um, in the law, as we have it today, um, if you earn or anybody earns 30,000 naira in a year, or less. So 30,000 Naira in a year is average of about 2,500 per month. If you earn 30,000 Naira in a year or less, you do not have to file returns. Uh, you would know that this amount is very ridiculous. Uh, it's ridiculous because when the 30,000 was put in the law, these were the days when Naira was as strong as the dollar. So it was a lot of money, uh, but nobody has amended the law in, in more than 10, 20 years. Mm. So, but we still have to comply with the law as it is. So, what that means is anybody who earns more than 30,000 naira in a year, including salary earners, including entrepreneurs, including anybody, you have the legal obligation to file your returns by the 31st of March of every year regarding your income of the previous year. So, I know that many employees, particularly, don't even do this. They say, My employer has deducted my PAYE. Why should I worry myself? Now, the deduction of PAYE is a separate obligation from the requirement to file your returns. So people have to actually go ahead and fill the Form A, that's what they call it in places like Lagos State, and then you submit it. Many of the tax authorities also have this uh, online, so which means you don't need to fill any physical form. You go online, fill in your details, your income, your expenses, if you have dependents and all of that and then you pay your taxes. That is when you would have discharged your obligation regarding tax compliance. So no matter what, so far you are earning above that, you should file your returns, even though your employer pays taxes for you. That's what you're saying. That's correct. So the mm. PAYE, so mm. it's called pay, pay as, as you earn. So what, yes, what your employer does is to remit an amount based on what they are paying you on your behalf. So it doesn't mean that all your taxes have been dealt with because somebody can be an employee and they also have a flat somewhere in Abuja that they are renting out, which means they are collecting rental income. Some of them have family businesses by the side and they're being buying and selling and making money. So the law does not say that once PAYE has been deducted, you are free from the tax net. No. The PAYE is an advanced payment of your income tax. So at the end of the year, you calculate all your income 
calculate all your taxes, and then you record the amount that your employer has remitted on your behalf as PAYE, and if there's any balance to be paid, you pay it. And in some very exceptional cases, if the amount remitted on your behalf is too much, then you apply for a refund. Uh, we say good luck if we get a refund. Thank though. you, because I've not heard that too. What government is good at <laughs> is collecting, collecting. They don't refund, though. So, 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 yeah, so for those that, uh, just lastly, and I hope we'll have more time, but we can talk about that in subsequent days. Lastly, for those listening and they want to be part of it or they want to do this right now, I've gotten those messages across their various states. What should they do? Yeah, what they need to do is they need to ensure that first and foremost, if they use their bank account for business purposes, they must get in. They can establish whether they have a team by going to jtb.gov.ng or RG, uh, JTB website. Anyway, they can Google it. Um, if you do not use your account for business purposes, you do not need to worry. Uh, but then you also need to ensure that whether you use your account for business purposes or not, whether you even have a bank account or not, you must file your tax returns and you must do so not later than the end of March unless your annual income is less than 30000 mm. Mr. Yodele, I think that's the much we can take today. Thank you for joining me on today's edition of the program. We'll, we'll continue to watch the situation. Perhaps the next time you will be on, we'll talk about the implementation of the, of the finance law and if we've started seeing any change in terms of perhaps our revenue mm -hmm. profiling, all prices. Anyway, that's another show. Let me not start another show mm -hmm. today when I'm ending one already. <laughs> all right, thank you very much, Mr. Yodele. I've been speaking with... I've been speaking with Taiwo Yedele, who is uh, the West Africa tax partner at PricewaterhouseCoopers. We've been looking at the TIN registration deadline set by the FIRS. I hope you now have uh, more clarity uh, on this matter uh, so that you know how to attend to your tax matters. Thank you all for being a part of the show today. It was nice hanging out with you, knowing that you s invest your time every weekday on this show, Monday to Friday, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Be the best you can be. Be the change you want to see. I am Nancy Inaji. Bye now. <laughs>